Hey Greens, welcome to Jackie Dablin with Things. Yes, that is now an official title. As you saw from the title, today we're going to be trying Mariah Elizabeth's Painting on Clay, but we're going to do it with a little bit of twist. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Mariah Elizabeth or even that video, <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me get you up to date. In that video, Mariah Elizabeth tries air dry clay in order to make mini blob type sculptures, gives them little personalities, and then goes ahead and paints on them. In my case, when it comes to air dry clay, I've had terrible experiences. So for example, when I tried air dry clay from the dollar store, all it wanted to do was crack left and crack right and dishonor it, it and dishonor on its cow. I have to say the idea and the design was kind of cool, but I did not enjoy it one bit. I would say this experience that I had was probably a two on 10 at best. And then the next try I had with air dry clay was actually homemade. So I decided to follow a recipe that was from a YouTuber and you know, made my own clay. Honestly, it wasn't that bad, but it had its challenges. And let's not get into air dry clay that is poofy and soft from the, no. no. <coughs> so similarly to Mariah, this is going to be quite the challenge for me because I hate working with these types of clay. I've also had bad experience similar to her when it comes to the pottery machines. <laughs> Yeah, the, all, all those videos will be down below for you grades to check out. So for today, what I want to do is see the clay sculptures specifically that Mariah made and then replicate them, but we're going to make them less cute. Yeah, you heard. We're going to make them a little more monstrous with a little twist of horror. <laughs> Oh, that was, did you see that? That was like a little ghost that just came out of my hand. That was pretty cool. Didn't mean for it to happen, but it did. And before any of you say, But Jackie, you're just copying Mariah, blah, 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 blah. Stop it. Mariah and I are friends in real life. Don't get between us. We know what we're doing. Oh, we know what we're doing. <laughs> that, that. Don't wave sharp pointy things, but I will wave a sharp pointy thing if you're not subscribed because if you're not That means you're not a grain of salt in the salt shaker family So make sure you click on all notifications while you're there. All right Without further delay, let's see what Mariah makes and let's see how we can Monsterfy it just a little bit. All right, so clay here it is. You know, I'm really liking that flower on there I'm gonna make that. Okay. Okay. One step at a time I'm gonna... I know she's really nervous when it comes to making clay, but Mariah I'm not sure if you've tried polymer clay Have you because you've tried air dry clay so far or maybe you've tried polymer clay You know what you just need some guidance, but for now, let's let's just keep down some wax paper for my work surface. I mean, it's not the prettiest, but it'll work. Alrighty, so let's cut this open. Rip out a chunk or a bunch of chunks. This is when having long nails is not an advantage. Click. Luckily, I keep really short nails because it's a habit from when I used to do karate. I don't like smushing and I like to building up under the fingernails not a great feeling let's just squish that around a bit just to get it um warm <laughs> of course mariah you want to get it warm <laughs> It usually is good practice to make sure that your clay is soft and kneaded to make sure that all the compounds are all mixed up nicely. I already feel like I don't know what I'm doing here. How about a drink? I'm just wetting my hands and working that into the clay to get it nice and soft and easier to work with. Okay, yes, that feels nice. Now you have to be careful if you're going to be using any kind of clay that needs water. If you overwater it, it's basically going to be like trying to sculpt with mud. No, very gross. You do not want that. It is not very pleasant. Unless your goal is to make a puddle of mud, which is totally okay. So what should I make? Uh, flower? No, no, no. Keep it simple. You know what this looks like already? A blob. <laughs> what if I made a set of custom blob figurines? I love the fact that she went with a blob because the shape itself has many potential. Now, what I'm wondering is why is the blob one whole piece? If, maybe I'm wrong, but we're gonna find this out together. But I think in order to make sure that the clay doesn't take a bajillion years to harden or to dry up, might actually be a good idea to put foil paper as like a little ball of foil paper and then make the blob around it so that, you know, we don't wait, like I don't wanna wait three to four days. So I'm gonna try that. Sorry, Mariah, I don't know. Uh, watch mine actually crack. That's probably where I'm gonna end, aren't I? You know what? We'll find out together at the end. <laughs> 
And so for this first sculpture, she makes a character that really looks like Kirby. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Oh, the eye. <laughs> the eyes. <laughs> But the more I look at it, the more I'm like, that's Kirby. Obvious for me. Obviously, it looks like Kirby. It has a cute little stubby hands and little little arms and the little legs. But then the tongue just came in. And I was like thinking lick a tongue. But yeah, those are two different monsters. And so with that, let's pause right here. Her first character is in fact a char just just a blob with a tongue sticking out. How can we make this dark, you say? Let us do it. You greens will have no idea how difficult it was finding this clay. I think by making that video, Mariah may have made it extra popular because here's a picture of the local Michaels craft store. There were none left and um, there, there were none left because I got the last one. That's why. So whether we like it or not, we're only going to have to work with three sculptures in, in this one pack as opposed to two packs. All right, let's get a feel for our enemy. Oh, that is juicy. Holy carp. Oh, that is really juicy. Look at that. That molds very nicely. Let's get a sniff. <laughs> Smells like nothing, which is which is very welcome. I do have a tendency to sniff things, so I appreciate when things don't smell or if they smell good, one or the other. So for the basis of this character, this blob. Let's go ahead and use this center while we're making the blob. Now the basic shape just seems basic as far as I can tell. There's really nothing specifically defining about this one, but I will be adding a little bit more lumps and bumps and you'll see why. And now all I did was roll a little bit of clay to make an underbite. Yes, I love underbites when it comes to creatures. Here's a couple of my old school sculptures with underbites because I find them cute. That's just me. Now, since this first character character for Mariah is actually called Froggy. Froggy the frog blob. I do want to make a frog tongue. Let's just see what a frog tongue looks like from close up. Frog tongue. Okay. Okay. Frog tongues are really slick. I'm a little uncomfortable. So I feel like if I have to be, get uncomfortable with seeing a frog tongue, you're seeing it with me. So we're going to go ahead and roll another piece of the clay and put it as the tongue. Well, <laughs> this kind of looks um, dehydrated. We're going to smooth this just a little bit more. And of course I want it to be extra long because I mean, it's a creature. And I do have plans to put something in there. I haven't decided what yet. And now let's go ahead and put a couple of fangs right on on the underbite and now for the limbs poof voila and now we're going to do more magic and the limbs will be on the body poof now we definitely want to try and make some froggy folds so i'm just going to lightly take my tool and push over here hopefully it doesn't get gross Hang on, maybe we need to wet it. Oh, oh, okay. I think that's good. Make some froggy folds on here too. Oh, too deep. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm kind of debating what kind of eyes do I want? Do I want to make them tiny and far apart? Or do I want to still keep them far apart so they still have the essence of Mariah's creature thing? Let's look at it again. And try and make them huge. Now, obviously, if we're going to go with the ugly <laughs> monstrous route we're gonna go with bulgy eyes so again we're taking the clay we're making a dent we're putting it in there and I figured it was still missing some texture so I went in with my dotting tool and added some warts here and there and here it is so far so we're going to put it aside and wait for it to dry hopefully it's less long than Mariah's because it seems like it took long and that's gonna take a while and by a while I mean forever and this second character has basically the same type of features smaller eyes smaller mouth. I feel like this one should probably have been holding a donut, but instead it's just a very simple cute blob with a bow. So the next character we're going to be making is going to have to have a bow somehow. We're gonna have to figure out how to make a bow into a monstrous thing because we want to keep the essence of Mariah's characters, just turn them a little a little darker. For this next sculpt, Mariah actually calls her character, the one with the bow, let's see what animal she calls it. It looked almost like a fish. Ah, yes, a little fish. 
So we're going to go ahead and do still the same body because the body shape's pretty similar. I'm going to try and do the limbs first the same way that she did. But for this character, we're going to give it an extra fishy look. One of the things I realized is if your hands are wet and the clay is wet, it's just gonna, you see, like, let's pretend there's soap right here. It's just gonna slip right out. You see this soap's gone. So I highly recommend if you do have a spritzer to keep your surface, sorry for the word, Humid. You thought I was gonna say the other one, didn't you? I almost did. And then my brain's like, no, nope, don't do it. So now that I have the limbs there, it really looks like it's sitting down and pouting. So now I'm really tempted to go with the fish that Mariah mentions in her actual video. These are her blobfish freckles. Oh wait, no, not blobfish. She's a fish blob. Not to be confused with the blobfish. Ah yes, the blobfish. So of course the features are anything but cute. And uh, you know, obviously, it's not exactly my kind of creature but you know sometimes there's a line so here's a line and there's cute above it and then there's ugly under it when it comes to animals and then there's a line that some animals are between ugly and cute the blobfish is not one of them I think chihuahuas are on there and sphinx cats let me know what other creature is considered cute ugly down below pugs maybe I think pugs too for the bow I figured I don't want to go the same route as Mariah because we can see that she does struggle pieces do fall and it risks crumbling. The only experience I've had with air dry clay, everything wants to crumble. So the bow is going to be a solid piece and we're just gonna wrap a thin piece around it and just have it sit right on top. Hopefully it stays. Will it stay? I don't know. Air dry clay has me traumatized. Air dry clay hurts. Air dry clay hurts. Air dry clay hurts. Air dry clay Air dry clay Air dry clay hurts. Air dry clay and here's the bow. I have, I love the bow. It's kind of like Jojo Siwa. Jojo Siwa, no bow, just doesn't make sense. Now we're gonna set her aside and let her dry next to Froggy. Now for the third character that Mariah made. It is, again, a blob character. It has a happy face and a little smirk on the side, and it's holding a flower. I'm not sure if the character we're gonna make is gonna hold a flower. I guess we're gonna find this out together, but it's definitely going to have to hold something, and we're gonna have to have the happy eyes. I want them to obviously know that these are exactly Mariah's character, but there was some kind of full moon maybe or something. Let's do it. What I found interesting with this one specifically is that Mariah did not want to do anything extra. So really the focus here is the flower and the happy face. So you know what? Let, let's first make the body real quick. <laughs> And yes, I did go a little spicy and add some uh, details on the feet for that one. And hey, if this creature <laughs> loves flowers, let's make sure that during a full moon, it's going to absolutely go crazy for flowers. And yes, if you're wondering, that is one huge mouth that I'm making. So let's go ahead and put flowers a little bit of everywhere. Am I exaggerating? Probably. But you know what? I don't care because it kind of, yeah, we're putting rules. Yeah, we're, we're definitely putting flowers everywhere, but uh, that's the path I'm taken and I'm sticking to it. Here is our blob number three with all the flowers. A little, a little excited about it. So we're gonna put them with the other blobs, let them dry hopefully overnight, especially because I did that ball of clay. Well, uh, uh, what's it called? Foil. Foil. I <laughs> room in them foil. Three days later. Now that our characters are all dry, you can see that the first character she painted in green. So let's have fun with that. And so after, yes, three days of drawing, I figured it was time to take them in because they seemed pretty dry. And for this purpose, we're going to use an airbrush because I just think it's going to go faster. And at this point, this project is taking me a little too long. And since Mariah's creature is green, of course, we're going to go with green, but a lot less you know, pastel -y. And she constantly kept referring to it as a frog because there was a frog outside. So you know what? I'm pretty happy with the design we went for on this one. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of character. Of course, the second my camera's off, I tried to pick up the character so I can turn it around. And guess what? The eyes came off. I'm, cha I'm starting to change my mind about this clay. <laughs> After glue gunning the eyes back on, I have no idea if they're going to maintain their integrity. I got the rest of the green on there. And now let's go ahead and paint on the details with acrylic paints. Part of me was really tempted to make the teeth just yellow, but I figured it would stand out better if it's white. And now for the tongue, just, oh my god, all of these textures are quite gross. 
But hey, you know what? Frog tongues are supposed to be slick. However, this one, I think he's a little dehydrated. And of course, let's not forget the beady little eyes. I feel like this thing is kind of giving me pug energy. Yeah, the eyes are, are a little bit of everywhere. Once I have the base colors down, let's put a little bit of Mr. Super Clear. And then I'm going to go ahead and put something called a brown wash to kind of make all the little bumps and lumps stand out a little bit more. Basically, it's just diluted acrylic brown paint and wiping off the excess. And now for a last minute idea, I was like, you know what? The tongue needs a little bit more attention because it's not gross as it is. And I did say I wanted to put something at the beginning. So we're going to be adding some UV resin and hardening it so it looks like slobber all over the tongue. Kind of gross, but kind of cool if you ask me. The effect of letting the light shine and the slobber's just freezing midair. I like this effect. It's really cool. If you don't think so, come and fight me. <laughs> and so here is froggy and let's look at it side by side with Mariah's little critter and I have to say it is a simple design but it is really cute and the slobber definitely gives it bonus points. The second one has a purplish pink and yellow theme so again we're going darker so I'm gonna try and see how we can make it a little more interesting in terms of colors. This is my idea of saying painting with colors. And she puts highlights too, how cool is that? When it comes to this sculpture, I really wanted to stick with the idea that Mariah kept calling it a blobfish. Well, fishy, but blobfishy type. So we're going to go with a fleshy pink. I don't like this pink. I'm not happy that I'm going with this pink because it's like grayish pink and looks sickly and a neat, but you know what? That's the version we're going with and I'm sticking to it because we're gonna go with what Mariah said and what she said is gonna become a reality. And of course, we're going to go with a slightly pinker lip, you know, just to give her a little bit more color. And let's not forget, let's look again at the one Mariah made. It does have freckles kind of on the forehead, cheeks, and somewhat underbelly or under the mouth kind of thing. That, that's what we're doing. And the final touch will come with the orange bow. And again, I'm going to do a brown wash because we want the folds to really stack out. I feel like I'm really starting to identify with this thing. Yes, this did happen again. So it seems like this is just like falling off. I'm just gonna glue this back on and let's keep going. Keep that in mind if you're using this clay. It just doesn't hold well enough to each other. And voila, here is our fishy blobfish character. Again, I'm identifying with this blobfish at this time. Maybe sometimes I feel like froggy, sometimes I feel like blobfish, but you know what? That's okay. And this third one that has a flower has an orangey theme going on. Orange is definitely one of my favorite colors, but we'll see what we're gonna have to do with the uh, my version. Time for our third one's paint, and I think this is going to be interesting because it's an orange with white roses. <laughs> obviously, it's eating all the roses. Which is, I mean, it's obviously a full moon, and it can't control itself. So the first coat is definitely brown. I promise you, it's orange in there. So let's try a couple of coats. And I definitely went with the idea of happy eyes, but I was thinking how much, you know, extra can these eyes be? And now that our details are all in here, we're going to again go with our brown wash because I feel like it really does bring the details up. I'm just hoping that I'm gonna get better at doing this because the blobfish, but blob, blob fish had a little bit of streaks. And here is our orange well, flower. I can't talk anymore. Here is our flower obsessed orangey creature. And of course, here it is side by side with Mariah's version. And I really think they work together. I feel like the three sets with Mariah and three sets of mine just kind of complement each other. It's like sweet and sour or sugary and sweet. It's like a chocolate coated pretzel. And so here are the blob monsters all together. I think I did okay, despite the fact that, you know, there were some challenges to try and make the cute ones into dark versions. Let me know how you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave a thumbs up if this is something that you enjoyed because I'll definitely try and make more. Remember, if you want to watch a crafty video, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch a cash or trash, make sure you check over here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.